Come on, everybody, let's all do the tin dance. Grab your tin partner and head out on the dance floor. Come on, everybody, let's all do the tin dance. Grab your tin partner and do the tin dance. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Rocking Dan Teaching Man's Q&A. I am your host for the Q&A, Rocking Dan Teaching Man, and I will be answering your questions. If you haven't done so yet, click on the subscribe button. Um, today's broadcast is coming to you from Rocking Dan Teaching Man Studios in Sydney, Australia. Uh, if you would like to follow the conversation on Twitter, you can use the hashtag RDTMQ&A. That's hashtag RDTMQanda. It's got the Q&A is being broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, thank you to everyone who has submitted a question. I've had questions from teachers, parents, um, and educational vloggers from all around the world. So let's get straight into our questions now. And the first question comes from Florence. And Florence is a year one teacher from Sydney, Australia, and she has a YouTube channel called Teacher Tales, where she vlogs about her life as a first grade teacher, a year one teacher in Sydney, Australia. And Florence's question is, what year do you teach? How long have you been teaching? I look forward to your upcoming video. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank you very much, Florence, for your question. And firstly, I would say I teach year four right now, and I've been teaching year four for the last two and a half years. Before that, I taught kindergarten. I've also taught, I uh, have also taught year one and year three. And I've been teaching for about 12 years now. I started university a little bit later in my late twenties. And so now I've been teaching for 12 years. Thanks for the question, Florence. The next question is from journalist Natasha Robinson from ABC News. Natasha is a writer and reporter and she covers education for ABC News. Her question is, hi Dan, what are the criteria connections between music and maths? And how can engaging in music help children advance in maths? Natasha, ABC News. So there are a lot of connections between music and maths. Uh, there is a great deal of mathematics naturally embedded in music. Music uses maths concepts such as patterns, repetition and structure. If you think about going from a single note and beat of music and stringing those together, you create a bar. So we're using addition in maths there. Um, and then stringing those bars together to make the different parts of the song, like a verse and a chorus, and then repeating that. So there's a lot of maths there in the structure of songs, of music. And you think about ratios. So how long are you going to hold the note for? How long are the beats going to go for? What are the different notes you're going to be playing in the scale? So you're thinking about ratio, you think about addition, naturally in mathematics. Um, you think about harmonies. So harmonies use a lot of patterns, patterns in math. So the harmony of a triad and the harmony of a chord. Um, and music uses a lot of pitch, so you're going from high to low. So that's another mathematical concept. Different frequencies that we hear in the melodies of songs and that we're trying to sing. The different chord progressions. Um, so going up and down the scale using different chords. So there's all that mathematics there. Counting and keeping a steady beat and the repetition of the steady beat are all really important in music and their mathematical concepts. Um, so I've heard that it been said that music is the creative side of mathematics and you can see why because there is just so much math naturally in music. So the second part of that question is how can engaging in music help children advance in maths? So firstly engaging in music helps children advance in maths because children love music and if there is a concept that you need to teach the children if you can put that to a catchy melody, then it's going to make it easier to learn and retain that concept than if you hadn't put it to a melody. So you can use songs to explicitly teach maths concepts. And 
Using a song with a lot of repetition in it also helps reinforce that and helps children retain that concept. So for example, the song The Friends of Ten, which has the addition combinations of ten, um, the children learn those through singing them and the song gets stuck in their head. Or the funky four times tables, the four times tables get stuck in their head, especially if they hear it over and over again, that song. Repetition really helps learning and music has a lot of repetition. Um, and they can also, you can do that counting backwards from 30, there's a song like that, rocking our way to 100, counting to 100, so it's put to an interesting beat and melody. And, and same with the days of the week. Okay, and then adding visuals, like the animations on my YouTube channel, so they're seeing the numbers, or they're seeing the days of the week, and they're moving at the same time, so they're making a connection between the movement and what's on the screen and what they're hearing. So you're opening up more pathways and so, um, to the brain. So this is why it's going to be easier for children to learn and retain mathematical concepts using music and movement and adding some visuals as well. Uh, so music is a really powerful tool in helping children learn those maths concepts and retain them. And studies have shown that music enhances multiple areas of the brain um, while you're listening to it at once. And I'd also say um, it's been said that it's like having fireworks going off in your brain. The neural pathways become more active and they release the feel-good chemicals. So learning those math skills with through song and dance and seeing some visuals um, really enhance the children's ability to learn and retain those concepts. So thank you for your question Natasha. Alright, my next question comes from internationally acclaimed children's musician, singer, songwriter and performer Debbie Doo. Debbie Doo has a YouTube channel called Debbie Doo Kids TV and she has had over 300 million views on YouTube so her channel is definitely well worth checking out. And her question is Hi Dan, what are your top three developmental benefits of music and movement for kids? Well I would say firstly, music and movement for kids can help children with their self-regulation. Particularly if you can integrate it with heavy load work or weight bearing exercises such as bear walks, crab walks, planking and jumping. If you can put that to music, it's going to help them find their optimal, optimal level of alertness and balance that out with calmness. So they may be um, having a sensory overload, it can bring them down, and if they're under-responsive, it can bring them up. So it find, helps them find a good balance so that they are ready to learn. Number two, music and movement can help children with their balance, with their gross motor skills, with their, and with their coordination, particularly if the movement aspect um, has crossing the midline exercises. And number three, music and movement is multi-sensory. So it opens up more pathways to the brain to help children learn and retain information. Um, it, release, it fires up the neural pathways in the brain and makes the brain more active so it's more receptive. Um, if, especially if you can incorporate visuals into it like um, animation that you can put up on your smart board or on a computer screen. So you've got the auditory aspect, which is the singing and listening to the music, listening to the melody. You've got the kinesthetic aspect with the children moving to the beat and associating whatever concept it is with that movement. And you've got the visual aspect where they might see the numbers or the days of the week or the vocabulary come up on the board or the computer. So you, um, you're attaching three different pathways to the brain to help children learn. So they are my three top three benefits of using music and I also had a similar question about the benefits of music from Gillian and she is a speech pathologist and teacher in Brisbane um, so she wanted to know the benefits of music and movement in the classroom. So really it's, it's multi-sensory, it opens up different pathways to the brain so it's more easy for children to learn and retain information and it can help children self-regulate so that they are in a good state of mind to be ready to learn. The next question comes from radio host Darren McElwain and Darren does the drive show on Air FM 88.0. He also does voiceovers and is a teacher and his question is the data from top 40 hits 
in the 80s is different to top 40 charts in 2017. Has this concept changed the way you write music for primary students? And I would say, no, not really, Darren. I do listen to a lot of different music from different eras, so I guess in that way, perhaps it has, but ultimately, at my core, I want to stay authentic to myself as a, song, as a songwriter and a teacher, and so I really have my own style that I've developed myself, and it takes in a lot of influences. So yes, from the 80s and some from contemporary music, but I haven't really changed that much. I think I need to be authentic, and I think with children, um, as long as there's a good beat and there's a catchy melody and there's a purpose to the song, then they're going to respond to that. So that's really what I try and do when I write songs. Just try to have a nice catchy melody that will engage children and capture their imaginations and get them involved in their learning. Um, his second question was as a teacher, and it's students in stage two and three are very critical of music videos and are selective with what songs they want to hear. What techniques do you use to discourage from clicking off the song and capturing their, their, and capturing their attention? Well, again, Darren, I just try and write catchy songs that I think will engage the children and that they will like. So if I have a good beat, a good melody, and there's a purpose to the song, then it doesn't matter. Stage two children will still want to listen and engage in the song and they love music just as much as the younger children. So that's it, really just trying to write a good song that, the, that will relate to the children. So I have a question here from Miss May and she is an amazing first grade teacher vlogger and has a YouTube channel called One Fab Teacher. She's a first grade teacher from the USA and her channel always has really positive, uplifting messages and tips and tricks for teachers. So go and check out Miss May's YouTube channel. Her question is, Dan, how many songs do you create in a month? How long have you been writing music for kids? And you're the bomb.com Dan. So thank you very much. I'll take that last sentence as a comment. It's a really nice comment. So thank you, Miss May. The first question, how many songs do you create in a month? I don't have a schedule. I know YouTube says that you should have a schedule and let your, subs your subscribers know when your songs are coming out. It could be two songs in a month, it could be three songs in a month, it could be three songs in a week, it could be no songs for two months. So it's just when inspiration hits and when I have time. Being a teacher, it's always a very busy job and that has to come first. So when I get time, that's when I do it. Um, I've been writing music for kids since 2008. That was my first song when I was teaching year one, so first grade. And that was the song about keeping the classroom, uh, sorry, keeping the playground clean. And I recorded a little CD for those kids. And then in 2009, I started to write a lot more music. When I went to university uh, to do my postgraduate in early childhood, I looked at some action research about the impact music can have on learning. And so with my um, year one class, I wrote a lot of songs to help them with their writing. And we did uh, some procedure type songs like, um, Let's make a pizza, and another one was We're Going to Make a Snowflake, a paper snowflake, and some description songs about different fairy tale characters. And I saw that it had a really positive impact on the children's writing. They were able to recall whatever vocabulary they needed for the song, or wh whether it was connectives or adjectives, by recalling the song, because it was in their head. So I found that music had a really positive impact on the children's writing. And then in 2012 was when I made my first video and uploaded it to YouTube when I was teaching kindergarten. And that was uh, about the addition facts to 10, the friends of 10. And that song um, went outside my classroom and a lot of educators from different parts of the world started playing it for the, their kids. So that's how the Rocking Down Teaching Man YouTube channel started. Um, it's just a song about the friends of 10 for my class that got shared around. So that was really amazing. So thank you for your question, Miss May. My next question is from Bernadette. And Bernadette is an amazing music teacher from California, but she's teaching at an international school in Japan. And she's got these incredible instructional videos on playing the ukulele, and she teaches the ukulele um, in her school. So go and check out Bernadette Teaches Music, because it's a great channel, it's a great music channel. 
Um, and Bernadette's question is, hey Dan, what are your students' top three favourite videos from your channel? I'd like to use them this upcoming school year. Now, because I'm teaching year four, their top um, three songs are probably the Funky Four Times Tables, also the instructional video, How to Play the Funky Four Times Tables. They like to come in and show me that they've learnt the chords. So that's, that's really exciting when they come in and do that. And probably, let's have a think, um, this, oh they like um, dancing to the three times tables, what, make, what makes a good friend, and good morning sit on the floor quietly. So I think that, oh, and the silent bean band game song. So I think that's their top songs for the grade I'm teaching. I think you're teaching kinder one and two. So I've made a list here of some songs that, that are good for that grade level. Um, so I think Bop Bop and Count to 20, Rocking Our Way to 100, The Friends of 10 Extended, What Makes a Good Friend, uh, and uh, Counting Backwards from 30. So they're probably my top songs for that age group. So thank you very much Bernadette, and all the best for the upcoming. The next question comes from Carolyn, and Carolyn has a wonderful blog called Kindergarten, Holding Hands and Sticking Together. She's also the co-author of two books with Dr. Jean, called Reading Recipe and Math Recipe. Carolyn's question is, what is your favourite song you've written? Uh, my favourite song is probably The Friends of Ten, because uh, it was the first one I wrote, and I think it's probably the most catchy, and it's the best song that I've probably written. Also, I like uh, What Makes a Good Friend, and right now, The Funky Four Times Tables. So thank you, Carolyn, for your question. Sean asked the question, Will there be a world tour? Well, not at this stage, Sean, not a physical world tour anyway, but I will be Skyping with classes uh, in the Northern Hemisphere when I have my summer time. I can get up early in the morning and do that. And probably some live YouTube things, so um, look out for that. But I won't physically actually be going to different countries just yet. But you never know. So thanks for the question, Sean. Todd wants to know, how should children who want to become the next Rocking Dan when they grow up get started? Also, if one is especially good, could they apply to be a Rocking Dan sidekick? So I would encourage anyone who wants to get into music to get into music. There are so many benefits. Learn an instrument and play that instrument and then develop what it is you want to do. If you want to become a songwriter, then write songs about things that interest you. So. Follow your passion in that way. So thank you for the question, Todd. Um, Aaron and Teresa have a similar question, and they want to know, can I purchase MP3s of Rocking Dan Teaching Man songs? And yes, you can. If you go to cdbaby.com, you can buy the digital download album um, from there. So I've got 20 songs up on CD Baby. You can also go to iTunes, it's on, Rocking Dan Teacher Man is on iTunes, um, Amazon, other music distribution places like that, digitally. Uh, if you want to buy the videos, if your school doesn't allow you to use YouTube, you can go to Teachers Pay Teachers and buy the animated videos. Or you can stream the songs on Spotify. So that's another exciting development. Uh, Michelle asks, what is your most popular song? So I've gone through the stats and I've looked, my most popular song on YouTube is The Friends of Ten. And I've got a new version of that, an extended one with an extra verse. Uh, on iTunes it's Hands Off, Feet Off. On Spotify it's what, what Makes a Good Friend. And on Apple Music it's Good Morning, Sit on the Floor Quietly. So different songs from different outlets are more popular. Kathy wants to know how many views have you had on your YouTube channel and right now it's about 2.3 million so that's fantastic. Um, the next question comes from Kate and she wants to know what are some of your highlights as Rocking Dan Teaching Man? And I would have to say any milestone on YouTube whether it's a million views or two million views is always a highlight. Uh, when I won the uh, Top Children's Music Blog Award from the musicauthority.org, that was a highlight. Playing live music to children is always a highlight for me, so whether it's Skyping or in the classroom, 
So I love doing my Skype visits with uh, schools in North America. It's always a lot of fun. Um, I get a lot of great feedback from the kids and just hearing the kids singing my songs live along with me from thousands of kilometers kilometers away is a great thrill. So they're probably my highlights. And then getting feedback from the kids. I know Maggie from Maggie's Kinder Corner. I Skyped with her class and they sang me happy birthday. They sent me a message on my birthday, which was really exciting. They also sent me artwork um, of me playing. So, and wrote sentences about my playing. So yeah, they're the highlights, really interacting with kids and teachers and getting that positive feedback and knowing that I'm making a difference outside of my own classroom. Um, so I have a question here from Brent and Brent's a kindergarten teacher from Tennessee and he says, what led you to the passion of singing skills to our kindergarten audience? And really it's just about wanting to help kids with their learning. So that's, that's really my passion, trying to help others and seeing them get a concept that they couldn't get before before and if I can do that through music and I can share it with the world outside my classroom then that makes all the difference. So that led me to my passion. Thanks for that question Brent. Emma Jane who is a high school teacher from northern New South Wales, an English teacher and also has a video blog on YouTube called Life in Kafufu Land asks do you play other music as well? If so, what styles, genres do you prefer? Are you in a band? What advice would you have for someone wanting to learn an instrument? So, I play a lot of uh, different music. I'm always very keen to play songs that I hear on the radio or that I have enjoyed listening to. I like listening to rock music and pop music and all different styles, folk, um, contemporary music. So I just like to soak in music from all around and I try and use whatever influences I get from um, popular culture into my Rocking Dan songs. Uh, I'm not in a band right now, I don't think I'm technically good enough to be in a band and if my advice is just for anyone to give music a go, play an instrument and enjoy it because it, it does help you with your learning, it helps you socially, emotionally, um, creativity it helps you with your creativity as well. So learning a musical instrument is a great idea and just get started. Jennifer, who has a YouTube channel called Glitter and Jams, and she's always been really supportive of my YouTube channel. She has a question. What was your inspiration for writing songs for the kiddos? It's really just about wanting to help the kids with their learning. And it's great through YouTube that I can do it outside of my own classroom. So thanks for that question. Jennifer and also um, like I said I had an action research a task when I went back to university to do my postgraduate study and I wanted to study the impact of music on children's learning and I found that it had a really great impact so that's why I keep writing songs for kids. I have a question here from Beck and Beck is a assistant principal uh, at a primary school here in Sydney, Australia and she has a YouTube channel called Clever Pickles and on that channel uh, right now she's got a lot of great mathematics games um, for children to play so they, they're really great for the classroom and uh, Beck's question, Clever Pickles question is Hi Rocking Dad, my question is what software slash editing programs do you use to create your awesome videos? Thanks for the question, Beck. Um, so I use uh, Toon Boom from, uh, sorry, Flip Boom All Stars from Toon Boom to create the animations, and I just import the clip art. And every second, six frames takes one second. And to record the music, I use a program called Cubase Artist, which is a scaled back version of the professional program. And I can just plug my um, guitar in and lay down all the tracks, and then mix it and publish the song like that. So thanks for your question Beck and check out Clever Pickles. There are a lot of fun games on there for uh, teachers and children. Cindy Price had a similar question to Beck and uh, Cindy has a blog called Mrs. Price's Kindergators and it's a really great blog so go and check that out. Um, she wants to know, I would like to know what program you use to create your songs 
and how do you get the clip art to move the way you do. So in the program that I use, um, Toon Boom All Stars, I get the uh, clip art just to move frame by frame, so six frames make one second. So it can take a while to get the entire um, clip art to move around. So that's my... And I've just got a question in now from Kate the Sleepy Teacher. So check out Kate the Sleepy Teacher on YouTube. She is a third grade teacher from San Diego and also a wonderful artist. So have a look at her channel. Her question is, Hi Dan, do you plan on making a CD for older students, upper elementary? If so, would they be centered around a specific subject? Well, I've got songs all the time that I'm working on. And I put them in my uh, YouTube book here. Uh, and a lot of songs are for upper or middle elementary because that's what I'm teaching right now. So for third or fourth grade, songs about angles, songs about friendship, resilience, being safe on the computer, all those sorts of things. So, and more times tables songs. And there are songs that you can currently use that I use in my classroom, like Good Morning, Sit on the Floor Quietly, Tidy Up the Classroom, The Funky Four Times Table. So I'm getting more and more songs together for older elementary kids. So I hope that answers your question and who knows, a CD could be around the corner sometime. Alright, well that's all we have time for on Rocking Dan Teaching Man's Q&A. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, go to Twitter and follow the hashtag RDTMQ&A. That's hashtag RDTMQuanda. You can also re-watch this video on YouTube anytime you would like. It's also going to be available on my Facebook page. Don't forget to subscribe to Rocking Nan Teaching Man for all the latest educational songs and animations. And I'm sure I've got a lot of new stuff coming out. Thank you everyone for watching. And I will see you next time and rock on with Rocking Dan. See you later. Bye for now. It's in my classroom. Use that I use. There are songs that you can currently table songs. And there so and more times.